what is going on guys today we are spear fishing so here's the story in case you guys haven't uh, watched one of the videos i met a subscriber while i was snorkeling in the water and he's a spear fisherman and, and like you know a serious spear fisherman not like the little hawaiian sling spear like i use and uh we started talking anyway he invited me to go spear fishing with some he and his buddies and uh so that's what we're doing this morning hey <laughs> how y'all doing yeah. What was your name again? Mike. Ace? My, yes. Mike, yeah. And Mike. you're Mike too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Ryan. Ryan. All right. Nice Good to meet you. Me. All right, guys. So this is Mike. He's the one I met in the water the other day. He's all camoed up. This is pretty sweet right here. I mean, even camo flippers. This is serious spear fishing. Let's go. This was so cool because this is my first uh, official spear fishing uh, adventure. I've watched lots of spear fishing videos. In fact, when YouTube recommends one uh, to me, I usually click on it. And so to actually be on one now with real spear guns and all that right equipment and stuff was really cool. And uh, Mike, Mike was kind enough to show me every uh, thing that I needed to know. So the first little bit, I just decided I would follow him around with a camera and he would show me everything that he was going to do. I was amazed at how long he could hold his breath and how deep he dove down. But uh, you know, that's just comes from, uh, comes with experience. So the first thing I learned about the spearfishing thing is we went around uh, uh, areas like this where lots of arches, lots of big rocks, lots of structure, because you needed to corner the fish. When fish see you coming with a spear gun, most of them stay way out of your way and so it's just it's impossible to get close to them so we had to uh, to snorkel around a lot of big arches and stuff like that uh, so you can kind of corral fish kind of corner fish and things like that and then also he would get down really close to the bottom as you can see right here and just kind of try to blend in just to be just to stay as innocuous as possible and just get closer to the fish I always get excited a little bit when I see uh, these lobster shells laying on on the coral where they've uh, molted, because uh, that this one was whole, and I thought maybe it was a you know just for a second there was a lobster that I could catch. But during the daytime, especially when the waters is clear, most of them stay well in the coral. So that was just a shell. So this was pretty cool here. Um, a bunch of guys were out there with us. There was uh, Nick, there was Ricky, who actually has a YouTube channel too. I'll link it up in the description. Uh, and some other guys out there. And we are all kind of spread out. But what they did is in the middle of the cove, they put this buoy out there. And has clips and stuff off of it, as you can see. And uh, they use this as kind of a reference point. You can hang your a gun off of it or any equipment or your fish. And uh, that was just kind of like that reference point. And then everybody spread out and just kind of hunted where they wanted. And uh, then you can see it's anchored there to the bottom with an anchor obviously here we have a trumpet fish i always think these are so cool i remember uh somebody told me a long time ago i don't know if it's true but they're one of the few fish that can actually swim backwards most fish can't swim backwards apparently anyway uh you can see here just tons of cool arches all kinds of cool stuff uh it was you know it's kind of the difference between like hunting in an open v field versus hunting in a forest. You know, underwater, this is like hunting in a forest. So there are lots of cool areas to snorkel around, try to corner fish. And then here, like you can see Mike, he's <laughs> looking back in the cave there. That's, that was really cool. That was pretty intense. You have to be careful, they said, shooting in a cave because if your spear gets lodged uh, way back in there, apparently you had a whole bunch of fish back in there. Uh, but if your fear, spear gets lodged in the rocks, you've lost it. So uh, you have to be careful about shooting back in there. So this is something that was really cool. Uh, I look down and I see uh, a crab claw. And then, in fact, there was a whole oh, a, a crab that had just been torn apart. And there were legs everywhere. There were bits of shell everywhere. And what that is is that is an octopus. Octopus find crabs and, and any kind of shellfish. And they uh, just tear them apart. Then they push them out of their hole. So I knew an octopus was in the area. And here's actually Mike swimming down with his GoPro view, he actually saw an octopus and uh, and 
pried it away from the rocks here. So there are octopus everywhere, but you know you can kind of find their holes if you look and you see a bunch of shells and, and crab pieces everywhere because they eat tons of crabs and stuff. And then here you see the, you know, the octopus, and it gives off this just ink and like crazy. It gives off this, this little mushroom cloud of ink. That was so cool. And uh, this one was too small to keep. They have to be over a pound in Hawaii in order to be able to keep. It was a cool little guy. And this was, this was something that was really cool. I've never seen this before. So he's up, he was in deep water. And octopus are really low on the food chain, actually. Most fish, will, even reef fish, will come around and they'll try to attack an octopus. And it seemed like the octopus realized he was, you know, he wasn't undercover. He wasn't anywhere near rocks. So he suddenly switched. And it looks like he was trying, he just was like motionless. He didn't go down to the bottom like they normally do. And I'm wondering if he was trying to make himself look like a piece of seaweed or something like that. But he was definitely – he was doing some little trick there, playing dead or something because uh, all almost all fish on the reef will eat an octopus. Then this was cool. I'm swimming along and I turn around and right behind me is this big school of mullet. It was actually the biggest school I had ever seen. And then Mike told me it was the biggest school of mullet he had ever seen. They swam by him as well. But it was they weren't in season. There's a three uh, three month off season for them. And we were in the middle of it. So we did not shoot them. It was really crazy. I was going over rocks here and stuff. He was just just fearless, just going through. Just It was really cool because it's just like hunting except you're underwater. And here's one of the other guys, Ricky. Uh, this, he has a YouTube channel as well. Like I said, I'll link it up. He had this little scuba tank that he just attached to himself, a little harness. And so he could breathe, had a little mouth pe mouthpiece on it, and he could just breathe and go along the bottom even longer than we could. And so that was a cool little trick. He had a bunch of fish, which I'll show you in a second. And then I found this cool shell here. Normally when you find shells on the bottom, they're occupied by slugs or crabs or whatever. But this one was not. So I actually kept that one. And uh, usually when we find a shell like that, we'll keep it. We'll give it to some kids on the beach because these shells usually don't wash up on Hawaii uh, beaches. You just don't find a lot of shells on Hawaii beaches. And so this is one of the coolest tricks right here. We're going along and Mike pulls out a spoon and he just tosses it and lets it flutter to the bottom. And I had no idea why he did that. So I asked him about it. And what it is, he keeps a spoon on him and a prize game fish why is the Ulua and Ulua though stay far away from spear fishermen but a little trick to get them to turn around and come closer to you is you can take a spoon out of your pocket you know you bring a spoon out there and then you toss it and as it flutters to the bottom it acts as kind of a lure and the Ulua are really attracted to it and they'll actually come over and to inspect whatever you know they're curious about the spoon they'll inspect the spoon and Mike actually captured some really really cool footage of it right here he threw out the spoon and this huge trevally well huge to me anyway comes over and look at it it's like on, it's it's coming over it's inspecting the spoon it's not even paying attention to Mike anymore and right here he shoots at it but he actually misses I'll show it in slow motion in a second the GoPro got all messed up when he shot so right here going around but I, I thought this was insane like the oh, trolley's suddenly not even paying attention to him and I'll slow it way down so he shoots and he's just a little bit ahead of it just leads it just a little bit too much right there and then I'll, I'll pause it so you can see it is just it's like less than an inch away right here I'll pause it look at that look <laughs> look it's it's literally it's probably even touching the trevally but just missed him. So that was unfortunate. But I thought that was a cool trick. And then we're going along and Mike points down. I see something, some trash, or what I think is trash on the bottom. And it's a $5 bill. It's actually pretty common to, to, uh, to find money out when you're snorkeling because the tourists come along and they'll have uh, money in their pockets and they forget that it's in their swimsuit and they'll wade out into the water and it just drifts away from them. And then it usually ends up somewhere around the rocks on either end of the beach. So it's actually not the first time I found money, but it's a nice, nice little bonus to the day. <laughs> so then of course I'm looking everywhere for more this is just a piece of trash or something bag on the bottom so but did not find any more money and so then it was time to, for me to spearfish and so one of the guys left a gun on our little buoy and I went out and it was official I was excited I was also kind of nervous I, for some reason in my mind I had it built up this is going to be a lot harder 
than it was. But, uh, you know, I loaded this bad boy up here. It was a little bit of a struggle to load it up. Mike was nice. He got me the, the right gloves. He even got me the, uh, the, there's a suit that you wear with a thick pad on the chest so that you can load. You can hold the gun against your chest and load it because it's very hard to load, as you can see. At this point, I was feeling really good, excited. But then I thought, you know what, better not get too cocky. I'm just going to go with the shallows and try this out on a smaller reef fish. So I decided to target what I call saltwater bluegill because that's what they seem like. They seem like saltwater bluegill to me in their mannerisms and how hard they fight and just how they look. So I targeted one of these guys. Boom. First shot. First kill ever with a spear gun, and it was a headshot. Beginner's luck, no doubt. And all that blood in the water there did worry me just slightly. Thoughts of sharks were going through my mind at this moment, but I was super happy. Um, yeah, I was pretty much basically feeling like a boss at this point. So I shot this spear gun for the first time, got the feel of it, and got my first fish. So here, Ricky comes over, he starts talking to me. He has a stringer of fish, as you can see there. They were chubs, and I saw tons of these these little, like, uh, saltwater chubs in the water. And he advised me to try uh, for those, because they're in the area, and they were uh, very good tasting. Some areas, apparently, they are not very good tasting. And he said, uh, that may be one I should target. And I thought, that sounds good to me. So I'm swimming around looking for schools on these little chubs and here I see I found a flounder that was pretty cool but I know not to eat a flounder unless it's really huge and maybe I can fillet it or something but I don't know this peacock flounder just that one that we ate if you guys watched that video just was not very good uh, this was the only miss I shot at an a holy holy I think it's called wine a holy holy I just like saying that. I shot. That was the only miss of the day. It turned out. I thought I'd have a. I thought that I would have a lot more misses, and uh, but I swim along, spot a chub, and just zero in on him. I cannot express how satisfying it was to shoot a fish, to go out and try something brand new, and to be shooting fish, and getting lunch. And trying just a brand new thing. It was just so cool. Thank you to Mike for, for doing this. And so I got my first chub there. Kill him real quick. And again, not a huge one, but it was a good pan pan size. Good eating one. I did eat these later. I know they were small, but it's that feeling when you're first trying something and you're having some success with it. So that was great. And then I see another one. Zero in on it. And, and just... For some reason, a lot of the chubs stayed far away, but for some reason, a couple of them would just come, and they would just, it was almost like they'd curious about you, and they'd get really close. Boom. Got that one, too. The water was really uh, foggy at this point. There we go. It cleared up, and so got fish number three. Thank you to Ricky for your help as well. This was just, this is so much fun. So there was my contribution to the day. I was super happy with this. And I had the other fish in my pocket, believe it or not. It actually fit in my swimsuit pocket. So uh, I had that in there. And then swam over to Ricky, and he put them on his stringer. It was just it was just so cool. And, uh, and then that wasn't even the most exciting part because while we were doing all this, Mike was still out spearfishing, and this happened. Well, guys, that was a blast. But check out what Mike got. Guys, look at that. All right, before we show you the fish, I did have one of my GoPros mounted up on Mike's gun. So, I got, he got some cool footage. Unfortunately, the GoPro mount was not the best because every time you'd shoot the gun, it would actually come loose. And if it fell off at least once, but here he is stalking this big, what turned out to be a milk fish. So here you can see the milkfish has its nose down, and I just know from from spearing goatfish that the only way to spear a goatfish is when they have their like noses down because they're looking for food in the sand, and only then can you actually sneak up on them uh, with like a Hawaiian sling spear. Um, so I think Mike he, right here he shoots at it. Unfortunately, the GoPro didn't get any more of the shot, but Mike did miss this one. Um, but he keeps swimming around. He was persistent, stalking this one here. 
kind of shoots off. It's so much harder to get the big fish. But then right here, he swims down. And like I said, unfortunately, the GoPro came loose. actually fell off the gun. But he got his fish. Boom. Sorry about the camera angle <laughs> there. He did shoot so it. So what but... was the story behind it? So... Okay, so it, it was swimming on the bottom. Okay. I shot at it. And I think I hit it right here. Uh -huh. And the spear didn't go through though. And so he started swimming off, but something, like it stunned him somehow. And then he started doing this thing where he just kind of flopped. But then he get his wits back and starts <laughs> swimming off. So like 30 feet later, I'm like, I'm gonna lose him because he's just getting away from me. Uh -huh. And so I swim down to the bottom, don't have time to reload the spear, just grab the spear itself, swam, it was about 30 feet deep, swam it up to him and just impaled it right here into him a second time. That's crazy. And that time it was in him for sure. That is awesome. I knew I had him on that one. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> well guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. We had a great day of spear fishing out here. That is so impressive. Thank you, Mike, for uh, inviting me out here. And we'll have to do this again. Nick, thanks for hanging out. No problem, man. And we will see you guys in the next one.